All right, so we're going to take another look at uh, AP statistics question here. Um, this is the 2010 exam, and this is form B. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read off the question. It's question number six. So in this question, we're given a nice big table here with a bunch of values. Uh, it's going to be a reg regression type question. Uh, the question states, a real estate agent is interested in developing a model to estimate the prices of houses in a particular part of a, of a large city. She takes a random sample of 25 recent sales and, for each house, records the price in thousands of dollars, that's important, the size of the house in square feet, and whether or not the house has a swimming pool. This information, along with regression output for a linear model using size to predict price, is shown below and on the next page. So here I have the price model all written out. These are the values in the table written out in graph form. You're given this and the uh, values in the table in the question itself. And uh, the first question asks us to interpret the slope of the least squares regression line in this context. So our least squares regression line states that the price is at negative 28.144 plus 0.165 times the size of the house. So we have a slope of 0.165. Now here's where the thousands of dollars comes into play. Um, we know that the price is going to increase as the size of the house increase, increases by 0.165 per unit size. So that's per square foot uh, that each increase is going to see. But 0.165 we need to multiply out by a thousand. So really what we're looking at in part A is a $165 increase for every square foot of the home. So that's your interpretation of the slope in part A. Now, part B tells us that the second house that's in the table, I believe it's a house with a pool, has a residual of 49. And it asks us to interpret the residual in the context of this problem. Now again, 49 is a residual but it's in the thousands. So we need to multiply that out by a thousand. So we can see here with a residual value of 49, uh, most likely this value here, um, that means it's 49 above what the model would have predicted. So over here, we can see that it's probably one of these values above what the model is predicting. So this residual of 49, this positive residual, means that the customer paid 49,000 more dollars for the house than the model predicted. So now we're going to move on to part C, which asks us to use the residuals from all 25 houses to estimate how much greater the price for a house with a swimming pool would be on average than the price uh, for a house of the same size without a swimming pool. So the first thing we need to do uh, in this uh, part is actually average out the residuals for all the houses with a pool and then also average out the residuals for the houses without a pool. So I'm just going to go ahead and average these out. All you're going to do is take the uh, values from the given table and uh, average them out.
So we have the average residual uh, for a house with a pool is positive 18.6. We multiply that by 1,000, it's 18,600. So we say that on average, um, customers who bought a house with a pool paid $18,600 more than the model would have predicted. Now I'm going to average the residuals uh, without a pool. You'll see that I'm not going to write down every value for the residuals uh, without a pool because there are so many of them. There are 17 of them. I'm just going to write some dots, but know that you need to uh, average out every single value. Now, interestingly enough, the uh, residual, average residual for a house without a pool is going to come out to negative 8.8. .8. Again, we need to multiply by 1,000. So we say since we have a negative residual, um, we're going to go ahead and say that um, on average, a customer who bought a house without a pool paid 8,800 less than our original model would have predicted. So it seems like a better deal to buy a house without a pool. And now we need to find the average difference between houses of the same size, uh, between prices of houses of the same size. All we need to do here is subtract that 8,000, that negative 8,800 from 18,600 to find the difference. So we had the average with pool minus the average no pool, 18,600 minus negative 8,800. You know to make that plus. And the final result is 27,400. So we say that on average, for houses of the same size, uh, the house with a swimming pool would cost 27400 more dollars than uh, the house without a swimming pool of the same size. So now we're going to move over. And we're given in Part D that the 95% confidence interval for difference in slopes of these two lines here is uh, negative 0 0.099 and 0 0.110. And we're asked to find out if there's a significant difference. So what these two lines are representing are uh, separate fits, separate linear fits for houses without a pool and houses with a pool. So the dotted line is going to re represent uh, the price of a house uh, with a pool. And uh, the solid line is going to represent uh, price of houses without a pool. And these two models predict it. So um, the price of a house with a pool is going to be predicted by negative 11.602 plus 0.166 times the size. And the price without a pool is going to be estimated by negative 27.382 plus 0 0.160 times the size of the house. We're asked the 95% the, uh, confidence interval for the difference between these two values is negative 0 0.099 and 0 0.110. We're asked if there's a significant difference between the slopes. So we can say that no, there is not a significant difference because zero is included in the interval.
There is no way to tell because zero is in that 95% uh, confidence interval. There is no way to tell whether or not the difference between the two slopes is difference uh, is uh, is significant. Excuse me. So now in the last part of this problem, um, we're asked to use the two models in D here um, to estimate how much more money on average a house with a pool is than a same size house without a pool, which is essentially what we did in part C. Um, except this time we're asked to use the two different models for the uh, price of a house um, with a pool and then the other model for the price of a house without a pool. So in this problem, there's actually two different ways to uh, approach it. The first one is simply finding a value um, that has a bunch of houses around it. So we're going to choose 2250. It's uh, right in the middle of the size, uh, the size line and there's a bunch of houses that are around that size. And what we can do is simply estimate the price uh, of a house without a pool of that size and a price, uh, the price of a house with a pool of that size. So I'm just going to write down the, uh, what we would think for uh, price with a pool and then without a pool. So we've estimated with our models that the price of a house with a pool uh, that is 2,250 square feet is going to be $361,898. Uh, the price of a house of the same size, 2,250 square feet without a pool, uh, we're estimating to be $332,618. Uh, the difference between those is $29,280. So this difference of uh, $29,280 is pretty close to what we found in part C for the difference between uh, the difference in price between houses of the same size with and without a pool. So that's one way of doing this. Another way of doing this is taking a look at the slopes of the, um, of the two lines. We see that the slope of the, uh, the, slope of the line for the uh, house without a pool is 0 0.160, really close to the slope of the line uh, for the uh, price with a pool, uh, 0.166. So instead of using the estimate of an actual uh, house size, we're going to go ahead and, and find the difference between the intercepts because in, uh, in, line, in two different lines, if they have the same slope, the difference is really just going to be the difference in intercept. So we're going to figure out what the difference between those two is. Remember that price is in the thousands again, so we're going to multiply by a thousand each of these values. So we found in this estimate, which is the second uh, way of doing this estimate, we found that uh, the difference, the average difference between uh, the price of a house with a pool and the price of a house without a pool of the same size is actually only 15,780. Um, so this is a little bit different 
um, that we, what we encountered in uh, part C in the first part of part E using the other method. So we might say that uh, 29,000 is closer to the actual difference between houses of the same size um, with a pool and without a pool.